Hey guys, Marco here, The Pro Consumer, and shooting along has become very popular here in the YouTube space and shooting video in general. And in this video, I wanna walk you through my workflow of grading a very popular form of log, which is Vlog L from the Panasonic GH4 and 5. I'm gonna show you my process of color correcting and grading in DaVinci Resolve 14 Studio. The reason why I chose DaVinci Resolve instead of Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro is A, it's cross compatible, so whether you're on a PC, Mac, or Linux machine, you can use DaVinci Resolve. And B, if you don't buy the studio version, you can download it for free and do everything that I'm about to show you absolutely for free if you go over to blackmagicdesign.com. And if you do wanna buy the studio version, I'll leave an Amazon link. It's actually Prime, I think, and it's only $299. It's not a subscription-based service. You pay one flat fee and you get a very professional nonlinear editor and color correcting tool for about $300, which I think is one of the best deals to date and I really really do love DaVinci Resolve. I actually use it as my only editor for all of my videos. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before we get into this, I wanna give you a warning. Log workflows can take a lot of time to master. And if you're just starting out filming and messing around with a log setting, you may wanna start in a natural profile with less drastic effects to your video, or it can really look bad. So first, what is log and why should I use it at times and not use it at other times? Well, log is basically a video profile. It's not a format of video, it's just the way color data is processed and then displayed on video. RAW, H.264, H.265, ProRes, XAVC, and others like that are video formats that cameras shoot to. Log is just a color profile. Now, log can be very useful when you want to capture a scene that has a lot of dynamic range variation. That could be an indoor shot with a window in the background that's blown out, or shooting outdoors with a poorly lit subject in the shadows and a brightly exposed background in the highlights basically anything that is pushing the dynamic range ability of your camera. For example, the GH5 will capture around 11 stops of dynamic range in standard profiles and will gain an extra stop in Vlog L. Red cinema cameras basically only record to log out of the box unless you load a LUT on the camera and capture nearly 17 stops of dynamic range. Now, as you can see, this clip looks absolutely horrid. It's gray, Zero contrast, basically no saturation. And if you look at the video scopes, you'll see in the Luma on the right top hand corner, it's very flat. And that's what we call a flat picture profile because all the highlights are crushed down, all the shadows are pushed up and the midtones are really smooshed in that fine dark line in the middle. So say that we've already done our edit and this is our final clip here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move over to the color tab. Uh, and again, this is strictly my workflow. Others may have different workflows, but this is just what works for me the best. And I think I get the best results here. So we'll go ahead and adjust the contrast and saturation with these little values right here. As a general rule of thumb for me in terms of Vlog L, again, this can, will be completely different in terms of the type of log format you're recording, but with Panasonic GH5 and Vlog L, I like to go ahead and generically push up the contrast to 1.2, and you see there's definitely a little bit more saturation, and we've expanded that waveform a little more on the top right-hand corner, and I also like to bump up the saturation up to 80, and that will give us a little bit more color. So if you look back at the original image, Nothing touched there. And then we've added some saturation and we've added some contrast. The next thing I like to do is go ahead and work the exposure and that basically defines the contrast and the scene of the clip. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to our color curve here. We'll deselect the colors and just work with the Luma profile. And again, I really wanna adjust this. And I also have these wheels down here that will uh, change things around. So offset basically moves the entire image, everything. I really don't wanna mess with that today, but I do wanna push the highlights a little higher 
the shadows a little lower and help define the midtone. So we'll go ahead and go with the highlights first. And what you'll see is as I'm moving this to the right here, everything is getting brighter in the image. And you can see that it's slightly starting to clip at the top here. And that's the blue car right there. This little blue and also the blue sky at the top. It's starting to blow out just a bit. So that's probably a good stopping point for me. I'll go over to the lift category here and we'll go ahead and adjust our shadows and we'll move this to the left. And as you can see, the Luma also adjusts as well with that movement. So we'll bring that down just about there until it just about kisses the bottom of the uh, line here. Now these are hard stops. So basically at zero, you're about to crush your, uh, your shadows, which could be a good effect if you're wanting to remove uh, noise. But at the top end, if you hit over 1023, that's, that means you're basically blowing out your highlights. So you definitely don't want to do that because in either case, you're going to lose detail and information in that image. So now we have a pretty good looking image. I turn that off. From the, from the start here, vlog L right out of the camera, and then turn our uh, color correction back on. And now you can see there's definitely a whole lot more satur uh, saturation and there's definitely more contrast in the image, but it's not exactly where I want it to be. And we'll add some more color correction filters to make this look a little bit better. But first, let's go ahead and still focus on the contrast and the Luma here. So using the color curves in this area, I'm gonna go ahead and push the shadows just a little bit more here, add a little bit more depth information. So you can see this one's definitely a little bit uh, more dark than the rest because there's no sunlight and that should really be uh, shown in the video. So that's what I'm doing here. The highlights, I'm gonna go ahead and take the real top highlights here, which are the blues and bring that sky back and that car back. But I kinda of wanna bring all the other highlights up so I can, uh, I can take this and adjust the highlights in terms of the image in the video and make it look exactly what I want it to look like. Uh, here are the midtones here, so I can make this generally a little higher just because they are a little low. Uh, but with that, I also need to bring a little bit more shadows down so I can bring it down to here. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, obviously you can see that this image is definitely a little cooler than I'd like it to. You can tell that from the RGB parade. You can definitely see that there's definitely a whole lot more blue in the highlights and a little bit more red in the shadows. So we can kind of uh, balance that out and get a Rec 709 perfect color combination to make this look very good. And the way I like to do that is using the color curves. Again, you can use color wheels. You can do anything that you'd like, but the general principle is very, identical. So first, let's go ahead and take care of the uh, little bit of blue tint in the highlight. So I hit over to the blue category on my color wheel. And since it's a highlight, I'm going to bring it down and kind of balance that image. You can kind of see that, that difference. You can see that in the sun, you're getting a little bit more natural looking color. Uh, in the reds here, I like to push up the red highlight just a bit, uh, not too much, probably right about there. Um, and then also in, uh, let's go back to red here, um, and we'll uh, bring the shadows up a little bit. There we go. And uh, that looks pretty good. So turn it off there and turn it back on. Uh, another cool little handy thing in DaVinci Resolve is changing the color temperature of your video. Again, this is still a little shifted towards the uh, blue end. And since it's not a complete raw, I can't really just change the color balance or the white balance of this, but I can change the temperature. So if it's definitely a little cool, I can add some warmth a little bit. So I can say, type in a value of 100. Anything positive is a little warmer. Anything negative is a little cooler. So I say, if I put it 100, I get a fairly balanced image and it looks pretty good. Turn that off, look pretty bad, turn that back on, and you can see that it's a very good looking image. Go ahead and move to a different clip and kind of do the same process. So let's go ahead and get a clip of a person. So here is a famous Danny Winget at CES looking at an iPhone for a video. I think someone's recording a video of him and I just shot a little bit of goofy stuff on the side. So let's go ahead and do exactly the same thing. Go back to this page. We'll go ahead and put contrast up to 1.2, saturation up to 80. You can kind of already see that there's definitely a little bit more life in that image. Turn it off, turn it back on. You can definitely see some more color in his skin, in the background, in the cars behind him, and definitely the case on the iPhone. Let's go ahead and change the highlights, push those up just to the top where it kisses the top of that. We'll bring the shadows down here. 
And now you can definitely see there's definitely a lot more separation than there was. So turn that off, turn that back on, you can see that. And then uh, since it's a pretty bright image, most of my midtones are kind of up here in the 700s. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my midtones back. And that will add some more texture to his skin tone, uh, add some more features to his face. Uh, it's definitely gonna look a little bit better. And let's add some more separation. So we'll add a little bit more shadows and we'll bump the highlights just a tad. We might be blowing out a little part of the top of his hair, but that's okay with me. So next thing we can do here is use the color curves on the Luma side and then add some more separation just to get it the way that I want it to look. So we'll push the shadows just a little bit down, highlights coming up, and then we'll uh, try to get rid of that. Um, there we go. I think we think we saved that little tiny clip of a highlight. So overall, that looks like a pretty good image. Definitely still a little cooler. Um, from from the start here, it looks really ugly and gray. Back and there we have a very crisp image. We'll go ahead and just use the color temperature this time, and we'll show you that feature because I really like using the color temperature. It, it keeps everything very easy. Uh, and the cool thing is, if you mess up, you can just go ahead and hit Command Z, and it comes right back. So we're cool. I'm gonna add some temperature here. Let's just say we'll add 100. Uh, that may be a little yellow. So let's go up to 50, and then we'll go to the color curves and uh, fix it on our own. So the highlights are a little bit more blue than I want them to, so we'll just pull those back just a bit. And uh, yeah, that looks really good. Turn everything back off, looks really ugly and gray, back on, and now it looks like a very crisp image. So this is just my workflow of how I deal with B-Log L in DaVinci Resolve. You definitely can have a lot of options when you're talking about color correcting. If you want to color grade, you can just add a serial node. And uh, I really suggest you work in a different node when you're color grading because you can really affect the image in color grading. And you don't want to ruin your image and have to start from scratch and do the whole color correction process. Now, I did a very quick color correction. A lot of people will spend hours getting every little minute detail in a color correcting uh, stage. Uh, Personally, I think that just getting it to Rec 709, adding contrast, gets a lot of information back into the image. So that's what I like to do. You can definitely spend a lot more time, and I definitely have spent a lot more time working with Log in terms of getting it to the exact image that I want. But lots of times that is actually color grading. So I do color correcting and then color grading in a different node and add some, some kind of theme or life so I can make this really, really, you know, I can really make this super ugly and terrible in my color correcting phase. If I mess up, all I gotta do is uh, delete this node. So I can hit here and delete node, and there I am, I'm back to where I started in my color corrected video. So again, this is just my quick way of adding color correction and grading to a vlog L file from your GH5. I really highly recommend you go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve 14. You don't have to buy the studio version if you're working with anything UHD and under. It's absolutely free on Blackmagic Design, and I think it's a fantastic piece of software, especially in the color correct area. It's absolutely one of the best in the industry. And if you want to have a nonlinear editor for free, it's a very good editor. Believe it or not, I use DaVinci Resolve 14 to edit all of my videos now. It's even faster than Final Cut Pro in terms of export time. And honestly, I've never had any major issues. And you do get a lot of major features in DaVinci Resolve 14. And if you are looking to get a professional piece of software, then DaVinci Resolve 14 Studio only costs $200 and $99. It's a one-time fee and you get updates for the rest of your life. This is not supposed to be a promotional video for DaVinci Resolve, but if you're not into that subscription model like the Adobe Cloud uh, and you're not a huge Final Cut Pro fan, or if you don't even have a Mac and can't use Final Cut Pro, then DaVinci Resolve is definitely the piece of software for you. And the great thing about Resolve for me is it's cross-platform. You can go on a Mac and get DaVinci Resolve. You can go on a PC and even Linux and get DaVinci Resolve and it works exactly the same. The only difference is on Macs you get ProRes, on PCs you do not. That's just because of a licensing issue. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this little tutorial video of how I grade Vlog L. If you have any questions about grading or editing or color correcting, make sure to leave me a comment or hit me up on Twitter at Marco M. Hanna. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya!